Today on our show, team switching, man, swapping out key parties in the comic book movie universe. Joss Whedon goes to DC. Tom Hardy goes to Marvel. What's going on in the world, kids? All that today and so much more. I'm Fat Man. I'm Batman. Who's that in Poison Ivy's garden? It's Kevin Smith and Mark Cordero. Two Fat Men on Batman. Welcome to Fat Man on Batman. I'm Kevin Smith. I'm Mark Bernard. Uh, you know, I always get a lot of complaints, Mark Bernard. Yes. Like, you guys don't talk enough about Batman. So let's lead with a Batman thought right away. Don't I just rewatched Lego Batman this morning. Did you? Did everything you needed to do and more? Oh, my God. It's so wonderful. It's like, it's it's porn if you're a Batman fan. <laughs> like, all the best parts of Batman celebrated, kind of poked. It's like a Batman roast. Warm and wonderful, even fuzzy at the end. Like, it's... It's superb, man. Mm. My hat's off to that whole team. Any event, that that was, but it connects. Tell me, they got a vehicle in that thing called the Scuttler mm -hmm. that like climbs like a bat. Yeah, isn't that what's in that JLA trailer? Ooh, where Batman's like my turn, <laughs> and he jumps in, and it's the same thing where it like climbs, More like toys. I guess, or they're like, <laughs> this is now part of the Batman universe. It's canon. It's a walking vehicle. Which it flies, seems, it's a bat wing, but then also when it lands, it can, like a bat does. Because that is the most efficient way to ambulate across a flat surface. When you're a billionaire, <laughs> you can do whatever you want. Listen, I got to have a flying thing or a driving thing or a walking thing because that's what I want to spend $7 billion to build. I want to build something that lumbers. <laughs> I mean, I could walk. I'm free. Um, they, it literally, I think it is the same vehicle. <laughs> damn, damn close. In any event, that brings us to... The Justice League and the news uh, last week that uh, Joss Whedon was going to be stepping in to pick up reshoots on right. the Justice League movie uh, for a heartbreaking uh, reason. Yeah, and Zack Snyder having the, the worst, uh, you know, family trouble I guess someone could have, like an unimaginable painful situation. We won't dive into it here, but for for a really good reason, he has gone to concentrate on real life you know we're those of us in this business and, and those of us particularly on that business on the other side of the hill that make the mm. big movies very very lucky to make pretend for a living totally. you spend most of your life trying to do that very thing you know like why be an adult let's make pretend if you can get paid for it you've cracked the code of the universe and stuff but you know every once in a while real life like absolutely intrudes on on the making believe and uh Zach had something very real, very horrible, and very tragic happen to him. And our heart goes out to him uh, and, and his entire family. Yeah, absolutely. And, like, the perspective of it is absolutely legitimate. It's, I have to deal, i got to get my house back in order. I have, to, I have to deal with grief and tragedy and awfulness, and that's just a movie. It's, yeah. like, and he said it, like, there's a quote that says, it's a great movie. I love this movie, but it's just a movie. And, and he's, like... Think about it. Like, I know there's lots of money and stuff like that, but, like, you know, family is forever. This flick, one day you're going to watch it on your phone while you're, like, in the bathroom or waiting for a flight. Like, oh, I'll rewatch that one scene. Mm -hmm. Like, that's how disposable this all becomes. When you're in the moment of making it, you're like, we're making grand art, even yoga hosers. You're like, we're making grand art, we're making a statement. And you forget that one day, it, like, it winds, you're lucky if it winds up. Mm -hmm. on a phone or something like that it just doesn't really you know m matter in the grand scheme of things compared to human beings and loved ones yeah. so yeah uh, unimaginable to deal with what he's had to deal with and 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 the smartest thing in the world anyone could do is let him go deal with the important yeah things. and like warner brothers has by all accounts been super chill about all this like yeah. you do what you need to do whatever you need to do do you want to push the movie back we'll push it back do you want we can put it on hold, whatever you need. And Zach said, no, listen, it's it's a good movie. It deserves to be seen. The fans deserve to have it when they should have it. And we got this guy sitting right here working on Batgirl. He can absolutely, like, he was writing scenes anyway. Like, there were, there were reshoots that they were doing. They had tested the movie, and they realized that there were a couple of key scenes that needed some help, and he drafted Joss to write those scenes. Could you imagine? Like, what a great idea yeah like, pull that dude off the bench like hey brilliant person could you yeah i wonder is you got any experience working on team superhero <laughs> movies like so bam they got the guy right in their corner and and it looks like you know uh even in the wake of it there of course being the internet some people said this that or the other thing the fact of the matter is like you're getting a justice league movie it is zach's justice league movie 
um, from start to finish. Joss is coming in yeah. to help out and stuff. But, like, you know, this is the man's vision, and it's heartbreaking that he has to step away from it. You know, again, I make movies. I make very little movies that are fucking disposable and shit like that. You're making something like this. The eyes of the world are upon you. A lot of financial pressure is upon you and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Um, and And none of that matters in comparison to real life and Zach got hit very hard by real life yeah you know and the internet does what the internet does which is by turns be incredibly warm and supporting which I saw a lot of I saw a ton of like, like oh I, my god like I can't I, a lot what? of people put away their like you know hater aid for a moment to just be like I can't even imagine it's all fun and games you know about like Marvel vs DC or whatever until something very yeah. awful happens you know. and I did see in, in overwhelmingly a lot of positive no, love thrown the dudes totally, around. totally. I mean, and and that's the thing. Like I, I personally have been somewhat critical of Zach's movies, and that's fine. Those are movies. That's the product that he makes. He puts out into the world, and I'm entitled to feel what I feel. Mm. But this depth of anguish and agony that he's going through, just as a human being, like my God, I can't imagine yeah. having to deal with what he's dealing with, and that is entirely divorced from whatever anybody thinks of the movies. It's Holy shit, like I just want to give that guy a hug and tell him it'll be okay. Or maybe it won't. I don't know. I've never done that. And with Deb, that. his wife, who's his producer he works with all the time, and all of his kids. He's got he's got a, yeah, he's got wide a big family. family. Um so yeah, um, like take the time you need, man. Get your get your head straight, get your heart right. And but then, when we see that movie, we know it's gonna be yours. We know it's Zach's movie. We know like Yeah. Go take care of what he's not waiting for us. He is going to take care of what he needs to take care of and stuff. Um, but but I'm there. I can't wait. I'm still eager as fuck to see this movie. Um, probably even more so now that we've seen Wonder Woman, mm, which Wonder we'll talk about <laughs> in a future episode. Yeah. There's an embargo. <laughs> can't tell you what we think until... Move. But so an episode or two from now, blah. It's like they'll <laughs> put the that things. fucking lasso on us and we'll be like, truth. <laughs> It'll be all truth. All right, so Justice League right now is getting, I mean, you know, the underlying story to that, to the main bad story is that Joss Whedon's coming in to do scenes on yeah, Justice League. like he's going to finish it up. He's going he's gonna to take it from third base to home. Which is really sweet. Yeah. If you're going to go, if you're going to turn to a guy, he's got a wee bit experience in this department. Absolutely. Um, okay, moving on. Yes. The, from one Marvel man goes to DC universe. Flip that. DC man goes to Marvel. We didn't even choreograph that. That just naturally I, happened. What? We could have synchronized, swimmed our way to medals <laughs> if either of us would take off our shirts in the pool. So apparently that ain't going to fucking happen. Nope. This is the medal we get. This is it. And the these are the shirts deserve. we wear in the pool. <laughs> um, I'll tell you right now, Tom Hardy as Venom, which is old news, but yes, we're going to celebrate it here. That. I mean rules come on like i didn't want a venom movie at all until you tell me that tom hardy's playing venom bang there's a review for a poster <laughs> somebody said on twitter because i talked about it on hollywood babylon but somebody was like you guys missed the obvious joke venom uh was what bane took to become bane ah. in the comics and now he's playing venom not a joke but more of an observation a more talented mm -hmm. funny person like the people that wrote that <laughs> batman lego movie they would have been able to make a meal of that but I thought it was just, oh, that's interesting. That's like a... He's getting high on himself. Hey, that's my fucking Sorry, touch. go ahead. He's getting high on himself. Yours was actually pretty good. That's pretty good. Much not better. bad. Um, the, uh, it's, it's, that's phenomenal. Yeah. And, and, you know, the guy who's directing it, Ruben Fleischer. Yeah, he directed uh, Zombie Land. Land. It was wonderful film. Yeah, which I And love. he directed, what was the gang, the, the Hat Squad movie? Oh. Gangster Squad. Or we whatever. can just call it Hat Squad. Hat Squad, the <laughs> billionth not, Hat Squad movie. Yeah. Not, the one, this one had Ryan Reynolds in it. Yeah, not, not Ryan Reynolds, Ryan Gosling. Not the ABC TV show called Hat Squad. Do you remember that? <laughs> no, that was Crime Squad, but it was also kind of Hat Squad. I was a totally Hat Squad. Was it? I mean, that's what we all called like it. Like Joe Mantegna in a hat. It's the, the same fucking squad. story over and over again. They're like, one time in LA, they used to throw people off a fucking cliff <laughs> you know, like, is that enough to sustain a movie You're like it's enough to sustain a series of movies and television shows we're gonna do this every 10 years for the rest of time well good for Ruben he's out of movie jail which is where I think they might have put him after that movie pretty much and then now he gets to play with Venom and that yeah, Zombie Land's an amazing movie so yeah, they keep talking about a sequel to that which I would watch in a heartbeat mm -hmm. but who the hell knows what the holdup is I'm all for this I'm all for the casting of this I'm all for the director of this. And like you said, like prior to this, I was like, yeah, I mean, I guess. A Venom movie, sure, why not? Yeah. Seems weird to reboot 
that not as a spinoff of Spider-Man, but I'm sure you know what you're doing, and I'll see it. I'm in the bag for this shit anyway. I love comic book movies. But now that it is Tom Hardy, I'm like, go on. Do tell. What will the voice be? Explain it to me. Well, I wouldn't be amazing. He's like, last <laughs> Tom Hardy is if he was paying. He's like, last time I picked an old-timey fucking scrapper and stole his voice. You know, for Venom, I'm going to go a different way. Like, he went the other way. We all expected Bane would be like, I will kill Batman or whatever. <laughs> But it was just like, <laughs> oh my God, I blanked on the impression. <laughs> Shucky, get out of the poor's mouth. <laughs> Doesn't even sound that good. Um, yeah. So this is gonna be like a, a highfalutin, genteel man of leisure. Hello, yes. my name is Venom. Or he's like, I picked a, a old Polish grandmother Ooh. and stole her voice for Venom. What do you got? Come on, you, you can't tee up an impression like that and not deliver. You have bread. <laughs> there you go. This is from years and years ago when well bread done. was hard to come by. <laughs> um, this is exciting news, yeah. Mark. And once again, what a great time to be alive. And they are sprinting to make this thing happen. Like it, the release date is October 2018. They're about to have all the heat from that fucking Spider Man movie, which they yep. put up a third trailer for Spider Man Homecoming. And every one of them has me shooting webs. All three of those trailers. Theatrical trailers are fantastic. And there's one trailer I saw. I don't know if it's a fourth trailer, but mm. maybe it's an international trail. It has mm. a lot of Michael Keaton and the story of what they're doing mm -hmm. and the bad guys are doing. So this this movie, it, my kid uh, was talking about the other day. She's like, that movie's going to make so much money. I was like, well, yeah, it's Spider-Man. She goes, not because of that. It's because he's in high school. Oh, yeah. She's like, everyone's talking about this movie. She just graduated high school. It's like, is that what they were talking about when you graduated? <laughs> Tell me what the children say. We well, spent a lot of money on your fucking education. All you were talking about was fucking Spider-Man and how well it's going to do. We got no skin in the game, I said. <laughs> Tell me about theorems and equations and shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, I, I, you know, if my kid's a prognosticator, that movie's going to make a lot of money. Uh, and That's so, her hot yeah. take. And Sony is also developing a Black Cat Silver Sable movie. Felicia Hardy? Felicia Hardy. And yeah, yeah. Silver Sable? That's Whomever that is. Um, oh, she's, she's a character, but her name literally is Silver, Silver Sable. Sable. Yeah, that's... Good job, parents. Yeah, way to code name. <laughs> or, or, fuck the parents. Way, good job, Silver Sable, mm. for not going like, you know, maybe I should be Black Cat. Nope. Felicia Hardy's like, that's me. I got that. I so got Black Covered. It's the Spider-Man universe is expanding. Right. You get Venom on one hand, and you're going to get the sort of lady crime duo team up. Silver and black is what they're calling it because silver and black, silver and black, yeah, not bad. Wow, that 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 is like really? They're not even use, They're not even going to spin them off of a Spider-Man movie. They're just going to go for it. Yeah, just silver and black. I mean, maybe they show up in Homecoming. Who knows? Sony's like, we got the entire toy box. Why are Fuck we it. sitting on like the one character, putting them out every few years? Fuck it, let's do the whole universe right now. I'd watch a Scorpion movie. There, you heard me <laughs> say it. Sandman! Ah, you know what movie I'm waiting for? If they're going to play with the toys, pull out Mysterio. Come no. On. It's coming. One, or day, one day they're going to realize, oh, we have a movie villain that's predicated on movie... We have a villain, Spider-Man villain, that's predicated on movie special effects. He came from the world of movie special effects. Mm -hmm. And what do we do in this world but movie special effects? And yep. you can explain away everything he does with, like, it was an illusion and shit like that. One day they're going to grab on to Mysterio and ride him to $2 billion at the box office. Because who don't love... Bubblehead fucking <laughs> and, you, and you get some giant fucking A-list star to play him because all he's got to do is show up for three days on a set and he's in a booth doing ADR for the and rest of it. Sometimes they shoot him like Robert Downey when he's in the mask. Mm -hmm. They just put him in there so he's, that's his, so they yeah. can get some glory shots of whoever they paid. Johnny Depp is Mysterio. See? Makes all the sense in the world. Shing, shing, shing. <laughs> Take him There's going to be, we got Johnny Depp news for you. Next episode. We're Ooh. Do it, That's a tease. That's a tease. Let's wrap and we'll give the rest of them next episode. All right. Uh, there it is, man. There's some news. Go go about your day with that news. Go tell people. Tell them where you heard it right here on Fat Man and Batman. For Fat Man and Batman, I'm Kevin Smith. And I am Mark Bernard. I'll come back next episode. Same fat time, same fat channels, podcast.com or YouTube.com slash Kevin Smith. INR.